So this question says P of X is equal to X plus one times X plus two times X plus three. The question goes on to say, if the given function P is graphed in the X, Y plane, where Y equals P of X, okay, so since Y is equal to P of X, I'm gonna rewrite this as, instead of P of X equal, I'm equals, I'm gonna say Y equals X plus one, X plus two, and X plus three. What is an x-intercept of the graph? So let's keep this in mind. Whenever you're graphing something, the x-intercept, which I'm going to say is a red dot here, represents a point where the y value is equal to zero, right? x equals something and y equals zero. That is how you find an x-intercept. So if that is the case, I could say, well, if y needs to be zero for me to find the x-intercept, I can just put a zero here. And if that's the case, which it is, then I can set each of these binomials equal to zero, right? Because each of these binomials gives me a potential x-intercept, right? Because either of these things could be, either of these binomials could be equal to zero in order to make it true that the y value is zero. So how do I solve for this? So for the first one, I would subtract one from both sides, giving me that x equals negative one, and therefore giving me an x-intercept of negative one comma zero. For two, for you know, this second option, I can subtract two from both sides, which would lead to x equaling negative two, and therefore an x-intercept of negative two comma zero. And for the last one, I can subtract three from both sides, leaving me with x equals negative three or a negative three comma zero as the x-intercept. So what is an x-intercept of the graph? Negative six zero, no, that's not one of the options. Negative three zero, yes, that in fact is, right? Like we got that here, it's our third option here, our third, our third example. Three or positive three zero, no, and positive six zero, no. So choice B is the correct answer to this question.